Thank you guys for tuning in and watching the Buffalo Fanatics. If you guys like what you see and you like the videos and the content that we provide, click every link in this description or go to the IG page, go to the Facebook page, but most importantly, keep tuning in on YouTube. If you guys like the merch, www.bffanshop.com. And if most importantly, you want to join the Fanatic team, the Bing team, www.jointhefanatics.com. I'll see you then. It's your boy and I'm gone. The run game, the run personnel, reestablishing ourselves in the trenches, turnovers, and the good old trade deadline happening the next day. Let's talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Rico back at it again after a ugly loss, an ugly beatdown. But guess what? The beautiful thing about life, the beautiful thing about having 24 hours is you go on and you forget about what happened the day previous. That's just what it is. You get over yourself, you stop the whining and crying, and get over yourself and get to the next game. And that's exactly what fans of the Buffalo Bills should do, including myself. The fans that take these losses hard when you know that you can play better. And that's exactly how myself and thousands of other Bills fans felt watching us play the damn Eagles. But guess what? We're 5-2. and two. Sometimes you got to sit down with yourself and really sit down and say, shut your ass up. <laughs> We're 5-2. and two. Now, am I comfortable with being 5-2? and two? Yes, I am. Am I comfortable the way we are 5-2? and two? No, I'm not. Because in hindsight, we should be 5-1, and one, right? Because we knew we could beat the Patriots, but that's in the past. But the Eagles, ooh, the Eagles came into Buffalo and established themselves. We, quite frankly, got bullied. We got bullied in our own backyard, and we deserved it. Why? Because we didn't come prepared. I feel we did not come prepared enough and the Eagles had their backs against the wall and they had no choice but to win because if they lost this game, their backs were against the wall and potentially out of the playoffs. Playoffs? Yes, that's exactly how the Eagles had to play it. We need to win this game and that's exactly what they did, defense and offense. Specifically, I'm here to talk about how we can bounce back and establish ourselves as one of the top teams in the AFC. Re-establishing ourselves in the trenches. Yes, that's exactly what we must do. Because I'm gonna say it, we have been exposed. We have been exposed the last two games and it started off against the Miami Dolphins. Yes, Mark Wahlberg, <laughs> I mean Chris Walton, or whatever the hell that guy's name is, didn't kill us in the run, but he definitely put a little crack in our defense. Yes, we looked a little vulnerable. We did. He rushed for 66 yards. I know. But the fact is, the matter is, other teams are going to start to realize that maybe we can run up the gut in Buffalo. And guess what? The Eagles did just that. Miles Sanders, Howard, they both ran the ball effectively. Even Carson Wentz got in the mix. 224 yards rushing against this defense. And it wasn't any gimmick plays and this that and the third it was bully football up the gut between the tackles and we're not going to stop and that's exactly what happened we got exposed in that defense and we just could not recover how do we get back to how we play ball bully builds football and that's establishing the run game and we have to do it up against the redskins coming up we will be able to do it on the defensive side of the ball because they don't have anybody that we should be worried about. Eric Flowers, um, Donald Penn, an aging Donald Penn. I'm not exactly worried about our defense going up against the O-line of the Redskins. Case Keenum and that young Simba in Haskins are not the trick. They're not doing it. So we have the advantage on the defensive side of the ball. What I'm worried about is the offense. We got bullied by the Eagles. We now have to give the bullying back to the Redskins. But that Redskins defensive line is not a joke. You've got the likes of Jonathan Allen, Matt Leonidas, 
Deron Payne and Montez Sweat, the rookie. The rookie that I almost wanted, but we got Ed Oliver instead, which I'm very happy about. But that is not a defensive front that you're going to sit here and try to bully them. We have to really come up with a good scheme to really establish ourselves because if we allow what the Eagles and Dolphins did to us and we allow the Redskins to do it to us, we're going to have a third game and it's going to be a long game. And we cannot lose to the one and six damn Redskins. We can't because now we are looking like some pretenders now with that Eagles loss. What the hell are we going to look like if we lose to the Redskins? Bounce back is what we need to do. We need to bounce back and bounce back harder than ever to beat the teams that we are expected to beat. And the Redskins are one of them. The next four to five games, we'll be facing teams that are five and 24. Reestablishing the trenches is the number one thing we must do to bounce back. The run game, the scheme, the personnel, the everything to do with the run game. Now here's where it's a perplexing topic to touch on. I'm pleased with what Frank Gore is doing for us. I am pleased with what Devin Singletary is doing for us. I'm pleased with what Josh Allen is doing for us in the run game. We rank eighth in the league in running the ball. We're running for 130 yards a game. So what is there to be upset about? What are you upset about? What am I upset about? Why should it, why am I upset? But doesn't watching the game make you say, why can't we run the ball as effective as we should? Because that's how I feel. I feel that we're still lacking something in the run game. I don't know what it is. Gore has 422 yards rushing, averaging 4.4 yards a carry. Devin Singletary has 172 yards, averaging 8.6 yards a game. 4.4 yards a carry for at Josh Allen. So what exactly are we missing? Are we lacking? What is the problem exactly with this run game? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with it. But yet, we yearn for more. Why? I think I know why. We don't have that explosive running back that can take it the distance. We don't. We don't have the speed on this offense. We definitely don't have the speed in the running back room. We don't. We lack the explosive running back that can take it the distance. Do I miss LaShawn McCoy? Absolutely. Was it the right move to drop him? Yes. But we are lacking explosion. And both Singletary and Gore don't do it for us. So how do we maximize with the guys that don't have speed and how do we get more out of them? Is it the offensive coordinator? Is he not balancing what we should be doing? We rank eighth in the league, 130 yards a game, but yet we still feel like we're lacking something. Is it a player? I don't know. But we need to figure things out because this run game is not doing it enough for me. I think I need to see more of Devin Singletary. I don't think. I know I need to see more of Devin Singletary. I do not want to hear that he's getting over a hamstring. I don't want to hear that he's too young. I don't want to hear any of that crap. We drafted you in the third round. I need to see production out of my damn running back. Get him on the field. Give him the rock. I need to see Devin Singletary have as much or if not more carries than Frank Gore. Simple as that. I don't want to hear anything else. That's exactly what I want to see. The run game, something needs to give. I need to see more, and it's more single tier. turnovers. I'm not gonna sit. I'm not gonna sit here and talk about who's committing the turnovers. We already know what the deal is. Here's the deal. We need to cut it the f out. Period. If we're not throwing interceptions, we're fumbling the ball. We've got to stop the damn turnovers. We do. And we know who it starts with. I'm not going to sit and talk about who, what, where, and how. We just need to, as a team, collectively, to cut the damn turnovers because that in itself is what's killing us. That's a momentum changer. That fumble alone on third and two was exactly what set the tone and turned the game around. Cut the damn turnovers and we will be successful going forward. But we just can't shoot ourselves in the foot. Last but not least, the trade deadline. What's out there? What do we need? You guys already know how I feel. I've already talked about this at length on my live shows. Once John Brown is not in this offense, if he's not in this offense, we are in trouble. I love Duke Williams. I love Cole Beasley. I don't know where the hell Robert Foster is. But I'm just saying, if John Brown goes down, we're in trouble. So do we get ourselves a receiver? 
Should we go and trade for AJ Green? Yeah, damn right. I'm in line to trade for Green. Give them what they need because that's what we need to go forward. We need that alpha receiver. 30 years of age, I'll take it. He's coming off an injury, he'll get over it. Let's talk to the Bengals and see what they want. It's frustrating enough that the Bengals are all in for whatever, but they're willing to keep and not trade assets on their team. Funny enough, I've got three guys on that team that I would trade for today right now. One of them being AJ Green. Absolutely. What do we got to do to get AJ Green on this team? The other one, I can't take credit for this. My man Bobby is the one who put this on there. He put a scenario up there. Why don't we trade for an interior defensive lineman in Geno Atkins? Geno Atkins, yes, is what, 30, 31 years of age? But that's the type of player that is going to be good for another four or five years. So why not take that window right now of Geno Atkins four or five years down the line and bring him onto the squad? Geno Atkins, make something happen for him. I'm sure we could. Here's another one. People are not talking about this one. I would bring back Cordy Glenn. I would. I'd bring back Cordy Glenn, place his ass on left tackle. Let's go. Now, we can figure out what we do with the rest of the line, how we have to shift this, that, and the third, but something needs to give. We need that nasty attitude. We need protection on that line, and I just feel that this line is a little suspect. Now, we can shift that line how we need to to protect Allen and give him the time he needs to hit receivers downfield. Cordy Glenn would be a big one. Here's the next one. Melvin Gordon, maybe that is what we need for this run game. Maybe that is the explosiveness we need for this run game. Maybe that is what turns us into an eighth-ranked rushing eighth team bank, to a top-five-ranked rushing team. Think about that for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, we're 5-2. and two. Didn't look good this game. But the beautiful thing about the NFL is there's always next week. We've got to step our game up. We've got to come down and establish ourselves again and show why we are 